I saw Bobby Lashley's fight at the Bellator show on Friday night. Bellator 123. Lashley with a, a dominant win over Josh Burns. Josh Burns looks like Tenzai's doppelganger. <laughs> I think it's the tattoo. I mean, he's bald. He's kind of big. Not as big. Not Like, not as tall as Tenzai is. But the tattoos. He's got, like, the same body tattoos as him. I think that's what did it. A uh, guy came in with an 8-7 and seven overall MMA record. I think he was like 0-4 or 0-5 in Bellator. So this should have been a layup win for Lashley, and it was. Lashley looked good, but I can't really say he looked, you know, fantastic or anything. He was in there with a scrub. He was in there with a guy that he should have beaten, and he did. Uh, cut the guy open, beat him with a rear naked choke in the end. So we'll see if TNA uh, has him incorporate that rear naked choke into his matches going forward. Even if he does, we're not going to see it for a long time since they're already taped so far in advance. But they should show highlights of this on Thursday and really play it up like something big uh, because they've got a guy now doing wrestling and MMA at the same time and even though the guy was a scrub, most people probably don't know the difference and you can show clips of Lashley just you know, pounding the crap out of this guy, choking him out, really make him look like the destroyer that they call him on television. So it's a good night for Lashley. Uh, A bad night, though, I think, if you're an MMA purist because of what they did at the end. I saw that. It wasn't even at the end. It was kind of like towards the end. They they, Just this embarrassing segment. I'm sure many of you have seen it. I linked to it on my Twitter with Tito Ortiz and Stefan Bonner, who were going to have a fight in Bellator in November. And Stefan Bonner is out there in a full suit with a masked man. There's a guy in a mask with him. And he says to the interviewer, he goes, if I could just take the microphone from you for just a second. And it's funny because the guy won't let the microphone go. Bonner's trying to take it out of his hand. And the guy is smart. He goes, I don't know what's going on here. And and I'm not going to let this fighter just take the mic, you know, because in in pro wrestling you would do that. So he was tugging on the mic. The guy wouldn't let go. And finally Bonner's like, all right, I'll let you hold the mic. And he cuts this pro wrestling promo, the, like the verbiage, everything. It sounded like a scripted thing that you would hear on Monday Night Raw. And he says to Tito, you know, he, he says to the people, he goes, how many of you people like like Tito Ortiz? I'm surprised he didn't be like, how many of you in the Bellator universe like this man? He goes, well, you wouldn't if you knew him. He goes, even the people that know him and friends, they don't like him when they get to know him. And then he, he rips the mask off this guy. And you could hear a pin drop and the tumbleweed fly by. Like, nobody knew who this guy was. Nobody cared. They never even explained who the guy was. I don't even think Stefan Bonner said at any point who this guy was. And as it turns out, it's a guy who was friends with Tito Ortiz for like 10 years. Maybe he helped train him. Supposedly the guy's a pro wrestler. I've never seen him before in my life. But he pulls the mask off and nobody knows who he is. Nobody cares. This whole thing was so bad it was so embarrassing and obviously you have a lot of mma fans out there now who are like i don't want pro wrestling this pro wrestling crap on my mma show there's a lot of pro wrestling uh stuff or promotional techniques even promos you know there was talk for a long time i don't know if it was ufc or bellator but uh, strike force maybe they wanted to bring paul Heyman in. there was there was talk of bringing Heyman in not like in an official capacity to work for the promotion And again, I forget which promotion it was. But let's bring this guy in and have him work with some of our fighters on promos. Which is a fantastic idea. And I don't think Heyman ever did that. But there's a lot that people could learn, I think, when it comes to... like From a guy like Heyman in terms of like schooling these guys on the art of a promo. And how at the end of a fight, if you've had this blood feud with somebody and now the fight is over, you don't go on the microphone and say... No, I actually like the guy. We're going to go share a beer after the fight. We're cool. Like, I I see fighters do that sometimes, and it drives me nuts. It's like, you guys are so stupid. Like, you don't get it. You don't get it. A guy like John Jones. Somebody wrote in to me asking, do you think John Jones should embrace the the heel character that people see him as? Because there's a lot of people out there who don't like John Jones at all. They think he's a scumbag, they think he's disingenuous, and he plays up his religion, this holier-than-thou thing, and in real life he just behaves in a completely different way. And I think it like bothers John Jones that people hate him and, and look at him that way. But if I'm John Jones, I, I see things for how they are, and I play that shit up to a hilt, the way that Floyd Mayweather does. He's got the right idea. That's why Floyd Mayweather is like the biggest pay-per-view attraction in the world. 
because that guy knows how to play up his character and the way people see him. A lot of people don't like Floyd Mayweather. They see him as being pompous and arrogant and all this stuff, and maybe he is. He plays it up. A guy like John Jones almost seems like he's afraid to play it up, and I don't understand why. Just embrace it. People will want to pay money to see this guy get his head knocked off his shoulders. So anyway, that's kind of the long-winded uh, route to what I was trying to say, which is how there's a lot of things I think that, you know, if you're an MMA fighter or you're an MMA promoter, you can kind of borrow and cherry-pick and learn from pro wrestling. Doing an actual pro wrestling angle blatantly like that on your television show, not a good idea. This was so lame. This was so lame. That's But hey, it's all anybody was talking about when this show was over. They weren't talking about Bobby Lashley. They weren't talking about the main event. They were talking about this angle that they did on this show. And I love how after Stefan Bonner, who looks like he could have a career in WWE when he's done with MMA, I love how they they turn the mic over to Tito Ortiz, and Tito either wasn't clued in or just isn't very smart, and I don't think that's the case. I think Tito's probably a smart guy, but he the first thing he says on the mic, he calls them both drug addicts. You two drug addicts. I I don't know how smart that was, especially in a sport where there there's so much uh, you know you've got a lot of guys who are on a lot of shit and they're constantly talking about drug testing. Now you got Tito Ortiz who's building to a fight by calling his opponent a, a a druggie, but it's no wonder Spike didn't renew Impact. They already have Bellator. What do you need two pro wrestling shows for when you already have one? 